sun. It's hot, helps plants to grow, sometimes gives you a tan, sometimes burns you instead. Most of my life, I've lived seeing this hot, fiery ball in the sky and never really thought about how much it could offer us. More specifically, how much energy it could provide. Utilizing solar power isn't a new idea, yet it's never really taken off. However, the sunlight that strikes the Earth's surface in one hour is enough to power the world for an entire year. All the energy we use adds up to about 16 terawatts a year. Looking at the energy potentials for different forms of energy, we see that the value for solar power is off the charts. It's amazing how much promise there is in harnessing the sun as a source of renewable energy. But in 2014, New Zealand sourced only 40% of our total energy from renewable sources, something we should aim to increase. The burning of fossil fuels like coal releases carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. These carbon emissions cause global temperature to rise as solar energy is trapped in our atmosphere. This can alter water supplies and weather patterns, acidify oceans, destroy ecosystems, and cause sea levels to rise. Many of us will be very familiar with the causes and effects of climate change. So it's time to start looking to the sky for our solution. Solar cells, also known as photovoltaic PV cells, convert the sun's energy into electricity. Silicon is most widely used as they are semiconductors, having some properties of a metal and also of an electrical insulator. Light from the sun is made of particles called photons. As a stream of photons hit the silicon atoms of a solar cell, they transfer their energy to loose electrons, knocking them off their atoms. An external circuit, usually thin wires, allow these electrons to travel from the orange N-type layer to the blue P-type layer. The amazing thing about solar power is that there's a lot of it so much more than we would ever need. So the average home could benefit from having solar panels on their roof. But what about densely populated urban areas? What if we could make use of all the vertical space that tall offices and apartments take up? What if we could turn whole buildings into power generators? This is where transparent solar concentrators could turn any window or a sheet of glass into a photovoltaic solar cell. This new technology has especially been made to be integrated into tall office and apartment buildings, which are covered with windows on the outside. Normal solar cells are opaque, and so they absorb a wide range of wavelengths of light. But in order to make these see-through, we must allow light to pass through. When this thin film technology is placed on top of a window, it transforms it into a transparent luminescent solar concentrator, which allows the visible spectrum of light, what we can see, to pass through while absorbing the non-visible wavelengths of ultraviolet and infrared light. The light is trapped in the glass by total internal reflection and guided to the edge of the material. Here, very thin strips of conventional photovoltaic solar cell convert it to electricity. By concentrating light to the edge of the glass, you require a lot less PV material, which helps to reduce the overall cost of the panel. There are no moving parts and no cooling system required, so they could last just as long, if not longer, than normal solar panels, at least 30 years. Say if we took a completely opaque solar cell and removed any visible light, the efficiency only drops by about 10%. If we think about this in context, then we're actually utilizing our spectrum much more efficiently. By harvesting energy from what our eyes can't see, we do not affect the functionality of a window. Traditional solar farms take up a lot of space, and the electricity generated often needs to be transported large distances, greatly reducing efficiency. 
This is why we should look to turn our cities into gold mines of renewable energy. Rather than focusing on the efficiency of each individual cell, this technology was made to achieve energy reduction en masse. The electricity generated can supply any on-site needs, with the national grid providing any extra. This will allow homes and businesses to be more energy independent. So many of you might be thinking, New Zealand gets barely any sun, there's no point in trying to establish solar power here. Well, let's take a look at Germany, a country that isn't known for being especially sunny. But in 2014, they were able to generate over 50% of their electricity through solar power, 23.1 gigawatts, half of the entire world's production. The three main cities of New Zealand, Auckland, Wellington and Christchurch, all receive over 2,000 hours of sunshine every year. Compared to that, the sunniest regions of Germany only receive between 1,600 to 1,800 hours of sunshine per year. So this technology shows promise, but we can find ways to overcome any barriers in cost and efficiency by using hybrid perovskites and multi-junction cells. Hybrid perovskites are a mix of organic and inorganic ions bonded in a crystal lattice shape. The efficiency of this material has been improving at a rapid rate, doubling over the last few years. This is because there are thousands of chemical compositions that can be used when creating the crystal lattice needed for solar cells. By making a thin film of this technology, then they can be manufactured at a much lower cost. And it's predicted that using perovskites could cut the cost of solar energy by three quarters. Multi-junction cells involve stacking two or more transparent solar cells, which each absorb different wavelengths of light. Compared to single junction cells, which are about 29% efficient, these can reach as high as 44%. By combining different materials, then we can absorb a broader spectrum of sunlight. By turning windows into power plants, any building like the 29-storey Majestic Tower on Willis Street could generate around 60% of the energy it uses. Solar power generates electricity when and where it is needed most. Electricity usage often peaks on hot, sunny days, which is when solar power performs best. Also, making these transparent solar panels won't be a separate manufacturing process from the existing glass manufacturing today. It will be a modification of tools they are already using to deposit the coatings onto glass. They could be installed into brand new buildings or retrofitted onto existing windows. If New Zealand took this opportunity to turn our major cities into solar farms, then we could experience economic, social and environmental benefits. The cost of renewable energy has been steadily declining over time, with the average price of solar panels dropping almost 60% since 2011. Compared to a solar panel's lifespan of at least 30 years, its payback period is only 10 years. And by creating demand for this technology, then large manufacturers can join the market which will further drive down costs. If we could successfully integrate this technology into our cities, many countries would look to us as global leaders in renewable energy. There may even be the possibility of exporting this technology to the rest of the world. New Zealand is known for being clean and green. This would truly exhibit how set we are on upholding this image. The renewable energy industry also provides many opportunities for employment. For example, the solar energy sector in Germany plans to create 56,000 more jobs within the next few years. A WWF survey found that 73% of New Zealanders want to prioritise the use and development of renewable energy sources to provide electricity and fuel as opposed to fossil fuels. And last year, Germany spent 25 billion euros on renewable energy, 
most of which consumers paid through a surcharge on their electricity bill. With so much public support for renewable energy, we could fund this technology the same way Germany has. Harnessing energy from the sun is also a very empowering and fair idea. The sun shines on virtually everyone, and there is no way for anyone to control or monopolize this. It quite literally brings power to the people. Renewable energy sources are also one of the most effective tools we have to combat climate change. Generating electricity through solar power emits 95% less carbon dioxide than fossil fuels like coal and natural gas. If cities can be more energy independent, then in turn, our national grid would be less reliant on fossil fuels and be relieved during peak times, cutting down on greenhouse gas emissions. By integrating this technology into already functioning cities, then we do not have to clear any land, cut down trees, or destroy ecosystems. The use of solar power doesn't require any water, so it won't pollute waterways or need to compete with agricultural industries and drinking systems. The sun is an amazing energy source. It's clean, sustainable, and virtually endless. It's the energy of the future. Thank you. Thanks, Nia Kiri. Would we make these panels ourselves or would we import them? So we would be able to make these panels very easily ourselves. We would have a normal sheet of glass and all we would have to do is put the very thin perovskite layer on top. And so the great thing about perovskites is that they can be made very easily. Scientists say it's almost like baking brownies using an Aunt Betty's premix because all we have to do is combine lots of ingredients, mix them together, and then just coat it on a surface. And so there are no patents or no. copyrights on this. Yep. And because we can mix and match a lot of the different ions and ratios within the perovskite, there's so many different designs we could we could use. And is Germany using a lot of this? No, so perovskites currently aren't really being utilised in the real world, mainly because currently they're quite fragile and sensitive to the environment, so they're not working so well on the roof of houses, which is mainly what Germany's using. So by putting these in windows, firstly, they won't be exposed to the outside. They're on an inside layer. We can also wedge them between two sheets of glass, and scientists also want to bake stability into the material itself. And so have you got any kind of costing on what it would take to clothe, say, the Majestic Building, which you cited there? Um, so currently there are startup companies which say that we can cover the costs of this technology within one to two years, but this is just estimates from them, so I can't claim that it will only take two years to pay off covering the Majestic Tower. Right, but you don't know how much it would actually cost to no. cover the Majestic Tower. No. You just know it would pay but off. We, yeah, but we know ways to reduce the cost if we need to. All right. Um, that's great. Thank you. Cool. Thank you.